everyone, Suzanne here. Welcome to my Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness playthrough. I am both extremely excited and extremely nervous about this. I do really like Angel of Darkness, but it can be an absolute nightmare to play. My partner spent a lot of time installing some patches and different updates and stuff, so hopefully this game runs smoothly. I guess we'll just see how it goes. And to mark the occasion, I decided to do a very simple Angel of Darkness cosplay, so Lara and I will match in the first video. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it and watch our opening cutscene. I'm so excited. <laughs> There have been 17 reported murders so far in this latest outbreak of monstrum killings. It would appear to be the work of a single, highly psychotic perpetrator. The name of the latest victim was just released. A Professor Werner von Koy. A female, described as Caucasian, brunette and wearing a ponytail, was seen leaving the most recent crime scene. Officers are advised to use extreme caution when apprehending the suspect. At present, nothing appears to link any of the individuals involved. There are no known survivors of these attacks so far. I'm now going to do just a quick explanation of that introductory cutscene. A flash of lightning illuminates a statue of the Egyptian god Anubis. The camera pans to reveal a dark room in disarray. A news announcer with a French accent can be heard in voiceover describing the latest in a string of murders. These 17 murders are known as the Monstrum Killings. The latest victim is Werner von Croy. A Caucasian brunette woman with a ponytail was seen leaving the crime scene and the police have been advised to use extreme caution when apprehending the suspect. Police crime scene tape is pulled down and a door opens. Lara Croft, Croft? Lara Croft quietly enters Von Croy's apartment. As Lara searches the place, we see strange symbols scrawled on the walls in blood. Lara steps on something that cracks under her foot. As she picks it up, we see that it is a photo of herself with Von Croy. Lara stares at herself in the mirror, maybe searching for answers. So we're straight into the story. We know that Werner von Croy has been murdered and that Lara is a suspect in not only this murder, but 16 other serial killings known as the Monstrum Killings. Lara was seen leaving the crime scene and so she is wanted by the police. Now, before we get into the actual game, I did just want to spend some time discussing how Lara survived Egypt. There was supposed to be a cutscene in the Angel of Darkness game explaining what happened and how Lara managed to survive at the end of Last Revelation, but it was cut out of the game. I will get into that at the very end of the video. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna get into the production of this game and why it ended up being such a disaster just because I don't want the intro for this to be so overly long but I do think it's helpful for us now to just go through that story and find out what happened. Now I believe it was for Tomb Raider's 20th anniversary that this deleted cutscene was actually released. It's on the official Tomb Raider channel, I will link it below but I'm actually going to play it in this video. I don't know if I'm gonna get like hit with copyright and demonetized for doing that, but you know what? I make about a euro per Tomb Raider video, so it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> I'm gonna put the cutscene in and hopefully I don't get in trouble. 
Give me your hand, child. No! You have unique strengths, Lara. Learn to trust them. But how will I remember, could I? Whenever your need is strong, remember the amulet. It will help you to learn. The past still troubles me. Have patience. Whatever is useful from the past will come to you as you need it. For now, learn what you must with each new situation. I will learn, Putai. There is a great darkness ahead of you, Lara. Remember the amulet and use your strength wisely. You are ready. Where are you? Where I have always been. Remember the amulet. So that's quite a cool little scene that they released. Um, I do think it's funny though that she's in her Angel of Darkness outfit in it when she should be in her last revelation outfit when she fell, but anyway. So again, I just want to reiterate that that cutscene is from the official Tomb Raider YouTube channel, and I will have that linked in the description box below. When Lara Croft was buried under the Temple of Horus, she was eventually found by a shaman named Putai. What is a shaman, you ask? That's exactly what I wanted to know. So a shaman is a person regarded as having access to and influence in the world of good and evil spirits, especially among some peoples of Northern Asia and North America. Typically, such people enter a trance state during a ritual and practice divination and healing. So basically, it's kind of mystical and they're, you know, in contact with maybe spirits and other worlds and stuff like that. So I looked up some info on Putai. There's not much info on her, but what I found is that Putai is a North African healer and tribal mystic. That's literally all I could find. <laughs> According to the writer of Angel of Darkness, Murti Schofield, Putai was intended as a mentor figure for Lara. Putai was supposed to be a link to all the mythical roots of the worlds that Lara had been adventuring in her whole life. Once Lara had begun to transfer and understand her place in the mythical domain, she would find all kinds of otherwise inaccessible secrets opening up to her. So basically, I think they were trying to set up here that going forward in Tomb Raider, there would have been a more mystical and maybe magical aspect to Lara Croft, that she now had this connection to the supernatural, um, if you want to refer to it as that. So basically all of the weird stuff that we see happening in the games, all of these supernatural mystical elements, Lara would be more in tune with them, I guess, and understand them better, which is quite a cool concept. So in the scene, Putai gives Lara an amulet and tells her that whenever her need is strong, to remember the amulet. Now this appears to be a different amulet that Putai specifically gives her, not the amulet of Horus. Although it does appear that Putai has the amulet of Horus tattooed onto her face. So maybe they were trying to bring in some connection there between, you know, the Temple of Horus and Horus and this shaman Putai. So that's the explanation of Lara's survival that they were going for in Angel of Darkness. Now there was an official Tomb Raider novel released in 2003 as well called The Amulet of Power and that gives a completely different version basically of what happened and how Lara survived, but I'm just gonna ignore that completely because I don't have time to go through the plot of that book and all of that. We're just going to stick to the Angel of Darkness game. Okay, so I just thought it was important to go through that and explain how Lara is alive right now. So now let's just get into the game and we're watching another cutscene. Help me, Lara. I need you to get something for me. Go on. I'm tracking five Obscura paintings for a client called Eckhart, but he's a psychopath. Why should I care? Because I'm being stalked. People are dying out there. Handle it, Werner. Lara, 
Please. Look. Go and see this woman, Carvier. She can help. I'm going. Egypt, Werner. You walked away and left me. Get out! Her eyeliner looks like my eyeliner when I was 14. <laughs> so this cutscene takes place two days before the intro cutscene. On a dark and stormy night, Lara meets with Von Croy in his apartment. Von Croy mentions that he is tracking five Obscura paintings for a client called Eckhart. But apparently, Eckhart is a psychopath. Lara asks why she should care. And yeah, they've definitely gone for a much darker tone in this and Lara herself is much darker, much more impatient. So Von Croy believes that he is being stalked. People are being murdered by a killer called the Monstrum. And Von Croy asks Lara for her help. He asks Lara to talk to someone named Carvier, but Lara is not in a helpful or sympathetic mood. She can't let go of the memory of Von Croy abandoning her in the collapsing pyramid in Egypt. The two argue further and then there is darkness, scuffling and gunshots. Werner lies dead on the floor and Lara has blood on her hands. Lara flees the apartment but the police are already on their way. They intercept Lara and release attack dogs. Lara makes a daring escape into the Parisian back streets, losing her backpack in the process. Lara is now a wanted woman on the run from the law. And this is not official information or anything, I just thought of it when I saw the cutscene. I feel like Lara losing her backpack here is really symbolic. It's kind of symbolizing the end of classic Lara and the rebirth of this new, darker kind of Lara. And I know there's some argument as to whether Angel of Darkness is a Tomb Raider classic or not. It does continue the stories of the classics, but it is so different from all the previous installments. I always kind of just consider it a standalone, honestly. Like I consider the first five as together and this is just too different. I can't put that in the same group as the first five in my head. And I feel like because this was the first Tomb Raider game that was going to be on PS2 and everything, they really wanted to reinvent Lara, reinvent the franchise. And I do feel like them making her lose her iconic backpack here is really, really symbolic of, you know, the Lara you knew is gone and this is a new Lara. 
but that's just my opinion. Feel free to disagree with me in the comments as well. So at this point in the game, we do not know if Lara has killed Von Croy or not. We didn't see it in the cutscene and Lara can't remember what happened. But something I did want to mention here is that I really don't understand why Lara is so angry at Von Croy. She's so angry that he left her in Egypt, only he didn't. He tried to save her and get her out of the pyramid and then he spent a long time after digging through the rubble to try and get her out. So he didn't leave her, he didn't abandon her. So I don't understand that part of the plot, honestly. And then just one more little fact before we get into the game. So I think I mentioned this in a previous video, that Von Croy in this game was actually supposed to be the character of Jean Yves, my favorite. <laughs> but he had to be cut out of the game and replaced with Von Croy because of the infamous lawsuit. And if you missed that video and do want to learn all about that and what happened, that is in my Tomb Raider Chronicles video, The Base. This looks like a safe area but I need to find a way out. To Ooh. move around, use the cursor keys. You can also use the mouse to steer me left or right. Okay. Um, my game's already acting off already and we haven't even started yet. Hang on. Okay, so I just tried to like fix my controls and not only did the game crash, but my entire computer froze. So I think I have a fix now. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> We will see. Okay, so let's get started. And also just a note I wanted to make here is that there are no secrets in this game. I can't believe they made a Tomb Raider game without secrets, but they did. To move, move. That bin looks climbable. Yikes, okay. I think that was just to move around, press those buttons, and then climb up on the bin. So, ooh, we got a chocolate bar. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna try and shut up and actually listen to her instructions because I do not remember the controls for this. To climb onto the bin, stand next to it and press the up cursor key. To grab the balcony, walk to the edge of the bin and press the jump key. Then press the up cursor key to climb up. Oh, she auto grabs, I forgot this that. This gap looks easy. To jump it, now press the jump button and the up cursor key at the same time. Okay. Cool. The controls actually aren't as bad as I remember them. Hopefully they'll be okay. We'll see. To climb the ladder, stand facing it and press the up cursor key. What? No, that's a wall, Lara. Can you please? Yeah, thank you. But they really aren't as to bad. Get off, press the left cursor key. Not as bad as I remember. Great. Maybe I can climb through that window. Walk up to the window and press the up cursor key. Right, you. I'll have a look around whilst I'm here. To open drawers and cupboards, stand in front of them and press action. Hmm. It looks like I need something to force this open. Okay, so we're gonna come back to that one later. Uh, oh, this apartment looks like it's seen better days, honestly. Um, ooh. But yeah, so I haven't played this game that much, honestly. So I'm gonna try my best to, oh my God, the purple ones. I've never seen a purple, a purple Euro node in real life. 500. That's my goal in life. I want one of those. <laughs> and a chocolate bar. So in this game we eat like food and then there's also health pills instead of... There are some medipacks as well I think. But they give us health too. Uh, I think that's everything. But yeah, I'm gonna try my best to get all the pickups but I probably don't 100% remember where they all are. Okay, let's go. Ooh. 
so this is I think it's called a, a doubloon or something um, so these are kind of items as well that can be picked up and be pawned off for money. Now press up cursor and jump together. Then press action in midair to grab the canopy. I just feel like I have to do a little bit of explaining here because this game is so different to the previous Tomb Raiders. And I know there are a couple of people watching who've never seen this game before. So yeah, I'll just point out little things like that that are very different. Okay, so jump and then grab. Ooh. She moves so slow. Walk up to the railings, Oops. stop, and press the up cursor key, and I'll vault over easily. Keep that as a snack for later. And yeah, obviously there is this kind of training area instead of Croft Manor yet again. I'm not impressed that there's no Croft Manor. I can hop to the other side. Ooh. Hold down walk and press jump. <gasps> that wasn't fair, I was facing the right way. Not impressed with that. I can hop to the other side. Yeah, whatever. Hold down walk and press jump. Do I not have a look button? I don't think I have a look button. To climb the drain pipe, walk up to remember that by holding the walk key, I won't fall off any ledges. Wait, how do I climb the drain pipe? You stop talking. To climb oh. up the drain pipe at the top, press the up cursor along with the right or left cursor key, depending on the direction you want to go. Don't keep me hanging around. I need to reach the roof before I lose my grip. Okay. Am I am I over? Now I've got my strength back. I can shimmy around that corner. Oh, cool. So yeah. Oh god. Oh god, don't fall. Go back. Lara, go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. So they also have this new system where you can only kind of hang from ledges for a certain amount of time before Lara loses her strength and loses her grip, which is actually a really cool addition. I like it. And so we have to do certain things as well that builds up our strength so we can, you know, move things that are heavier, shimmy for a longer amount of time, stuff like that. So that's a really cool addition to the game, I think. Makes it a bit more realistic. Okay. Climb up. Made it. No time to waste. I need to get to Carvier's apartment. Yeah, so that's kind of Lara's Could be objective. In there. I need a way to prise those doors open. Yeah, okay, we get it. Um, yeah, our objective is to find Carvier like Werner told us to. To move the barrel, Ooh. stand next to it, then press and hold action. While still holding action. To, to, what? Oh. Oh damn, I made it go away. I really need these tutorials. <sighs> There's a crowbar down there. Hmm, that'll come in useful. To hang from the edge of the building, walk to the ledge and press action. To make me let go, press action again, or press the up cursor key to climb back up. Okay, so... Action. Ah, there we go. And press action again. I need to shimmy to that walkway, but I don't think I'm strong enough yet. Okay, we'll go, we'll go get stronger. Don't worry about it. Oops. And we're actually going to go back down because now we have the crowbar so we can open that door we couldn't open before. Oh, and actually, I'm just remembering now, I think I missed a medipack. I should go back and get that as well. Pretty sure I missed a medipack. Oh yeah, they're little, um, like, plasters or band-aids um, to heal as well, which I think is pretty cool. Okay. I feel stronger now. Yay, our favourite phrase. 
I'm so happy. She's gonna say that a lot. A lot. But I do love her outfit. She looks really, really cool. Okay, so we got a gun. Is there anything else in here? I don't know. I don't know who would keep it. Oh, Slara would just stop. Um, I don't know who would like randomly keep a gun on a roof in a cupboard, but I don't know. They just did <laughs> because they wanted to. Right. Um, I'm tempted to try and take a shortcut down, but that probably probably won't end well. Let's be honest. Or should we? Should we try? Let's. Hang on, let's give it a go. Oh. Oh, wait. I think I can. Oh, no, I can't shimmy. Can I not shimmy? Shimmy at all. What if I did it here? The jump to that canopy looks challenging, but I think I'll make it. Walk to the edge and stop. What? I've already done that. What are you talking about? Okay. I'm getting stressed now. Um, was there a medi pack? Ooh. Was there, oh, there is down there. Hang on, I missed that. Okay. Can I? I can't get it from here, can I? Okay, maybe I jump. Oh, maybe I jump down. Can I jump? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's try it. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. I'm really injured now. <laughs> I'm really injured. I have no look. I have no look button. How am I supposed to... How am I supposed to line up this jump? Right, hang on. There we go. Got it. Whoops. Can't. No, I, I wanted you to jump. Jump over the. Lara, jump over. Jump. It's ridiculous. Stop turning in circles. Right. I need to- okay, I get it, you're injured! How do I take health? Uh, guys, I can't figure out how to take health. I cannot figure that out. Uh, right. Look, we'll just- we'll just continue. Uh, we'll just continue. Aha! Okay, here we go. Here we go. Health. Yes. Use a chocolate bar. Is that enough? Are you okay, Lara? Yeah, I think she's fine now. Just needed a bit of chocolate. She's fine. Okay, so I figured out where my items menu is. It's all good. And that, did we get, oh yeah, the necklace is up the top. I didn't see it there. So yeah, that just gave us a necklace that we can pawn off later. Not super exciting, but anyway, we got it. So let's just make our way back up to the rooftop. Okay, so now we're used to the controls and everything. 
and I think I have the game working pretty well now so hopefully it's smooth sailing from here on out we'll see we'll see okay up you get thank you okay so I mean oh hang on I'm shimmying yeah I'm shimmying over there okay Go, 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 go. Oh, that meter is, is, is depleting fast. Oh, I actually don't think I'm going to make it. No, I'm not going to make it. Oh, my God. What the hell? Go. Go, Lara. Go. Go. I need to move quietly. Press the stealth key and then use the cursor keys to move me around. Just about made it. Oh, my God. Okay, but that's stealth. Hang on, I need to, I need to fix these controls again. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, to hug the wall whilst moving in stealth, press the action button when I'm standing next to it. Push right or left to move me. When I reach a corner, I will peer around. This is cool. Oh, it's so cool! I love it. Okay. So we're gonna sneak up Great. and get this key. There's the key. And I'm pretty sure that we can sneak up behind this guy and like take him out. Woo. Can't we? <coughs> yeah! Take that! Random guy who is minding his own business. Take that! Do you know what? Lara's kind of evil in this game, so it's all okay. It's all fine. <laughs> okay. Right. We're making we're making good progress, I think. Um I forgot to mention that we're gonna do four levels in this video, hopefully, so we'll see how we get on. Okay, I have it paused because I do believe this segment is time sensitive. So just really quickly there, Lara is spotted by the police. She kicks down a door and enters a derelict building, barring the doors behind her. So yeah, I don't think I said actually, the first level we just played is called Parisian Backstreets and now this one is called Derelict Building, did it say? Der derelict Apartment? Oh my god. Okay, anyway, yeah, look, it's a new level. Okay, so yeah, basically we need to get through this derelict apartment building and escape from the police. And if we're too slow, they will catch us and arrest us, which means game over. Okay, so this is actually useless to do because they break through the door anyway, but I just think it's kind of fun and I wanna do it. So you can move that in front of the door, which is pretty fun. Great, okay, oh, so I need to keep keep my mind on the floors. Okay, so that was ground floor, so this is first floor. There's nothing here. Okay. Um. Oh, they're bursting through. Okay. This always stresses me out so much. Why have they got riot gear? Oh my God, Lara is one woman. One woman. Oh, stop with your gas. Right, oh, there's nothing here. Oh god, why can't I remember anything? <gasps> okay, so this is floor- Oh god! This is floor two. Stop, this is dangerous. This, this is dangerous. Is locked. I'll need a key. Okay, so I need to come back to floor two. Oh no! Oh no. Don't catch me. No, I've been, I've been too slow. <laughs> I've been too slow on this. <sighs> right, come on. Shake a leg, shake a leg. 
Okay, give me those. And obviously the longer we take as well, uh, the more the place fills up with gas and we can't breathe in the tear gas, I assume it is, or something. So yeah, we just, we have to move quickly and get out of here. Um, right, so that was, did we have floor three yet? No, this is floor three. Isn't there? Oh, I lost count. Yeah, this is floor three. I feel stronger now. Yeah, you go, girl. I feel like we should do a shot every time she says that. I don't have shots. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Quick, 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 quick. Grab your stuff and go. Grab your stuff and go. Come on, Lara. What are they? Oh, I think they're batteries or something. Okay, I think I have everything. Let's go. <gasps> it's filling up. It's filling up. It's filling up. Can I roll? Oh, I can. Super slow, but I can. Um. Oh, that's blocked. Oh, so we need this. Oh, come on, Lara. Stop with your sugar. Stop with... Stop it. Actually don't have time for this shite right now. So stressed out. Stop, Lara. Stop. Get up on the block. <gasps> My god, the stress. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna suffocate. There better be air in here. Oh there is. Okay. So hang on, there's a key now. One of them opens that door. Oh no, we don't want to go out there yet, that ends the level. One of them is here to open that door downstairs. And then this, no, sorry, yeah, one of the keys, sorry, no, one of the keys turns on the lift here and then one opens the apartment downstairs, that's it. Guys, I'm actually stressing the hell out. Okay, so here's the lift, open. Right, so we're going to floor two. Floor two, there we go, press the wrong button. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so stressed. Oh, I'm so stressed. We're gonna... We're gonna suffocate, I just know it. I do Oh god, no. Stop, Lara! This... Stop it. The controls are out of control. Absolutely out of control. Right, here we go. Quick, 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 quick. Grab your stuff. Grab your stuff. Let's go. Oh, it stops the pleading when you're doing the animation. Oh, that's like kind of comforting. Or is, no, this room's actually just hasn't got gas in it. That's good. Okay. Oh, this is me in panic mode. Lara, can you please just go where I'm asking you to go? I'm not even looking at what I'm picking up. I'm so, so stressed. Okay, I think that's everything. Right, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, let's get the lift. Get in. Let's go. So stressful you, you obviously don't have to do that you can just like go straight out the door if you want to um, but I'm trying my best to get everything trying my best right let's leave let's leave this okay so now we're into the level industrial rooftops so yeah, I don't hugely remember this level, but sure, we'll see what happens. Looks like it will take my weight. Here we go, here we go. Press up to tuck my legs up. Ah! Would you... Go! We're running out of strength! 
This feels like it's taken longer than doing it the other way. <gasps> what is happening? Is that good enough? Yeah, okay. Ah, stop. Right, grab those. And then, oh, this is safe to walk on, this bit here, I'm pretty sure. Ah, stop. <gasps> oh no, I messed it up. Maybe if I just try and get close to the edge and then jump. Jump. There we go. You go away. I mean, like, they're being a bit OTT chasing Lara, who, at this point, is only a murder suspect. Like, she hasn't been proven, you know, to be the killer or anything. Um, I think we can slide down and burst through that skylight, but we miss a pickup, so let's go this way. Hang on. Can I drop down? There we go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we missed this pickup if we fall through the skylight, but it's kind of sad because that's a really cool part. Oh well. Um, right, so we've got some pickups here as well. Chocolate bar, I'll take you. What is this? A lighter? What's that? Oh, ammo, is it? I don't even know. Right, um... What is in here? The warehouse. Uh, I don't think we go there quite yet. I feel like we go to this ladder. Oh, there's another one here. Go away. Ah, go away. I literally just came up here to grab this. Oh! Okay. Now, I know there's a few different things to do down here. And I keep going. Thank you. Uh, I can't exactly remember what there is or what order to do it in, but I mean, sure, look, I'll try my best. I'll try my best. Can I just, yeah, okay. Hmm. So I think we pull a stop. Oh, it's gonna drive me mad. I think we pull this to get stronger. My legs feel stronger. Cool. Uh, that is a barrel. That is a barrel. Excuse me, Lara. Hang on. There was something. Something flashing. It looks like a lighter again, but I actually think it's ammo. Here. Can I climb over these? No. On. I think we can actually climb over this one. Oh wait, many packs. I need this the way I'm playing. Hang on. There's no barbed wire here. Oh yeah, I can. <gasps> okay, go on. You're gone. Take that. 
Poor doggy, but like, he tried to attack me. <laughs> in my defense. Is there, oh it is, there is something in there in the dumpster. Stop spinning around, Lara. You're breaking my heart. Yeah, I am playing this on keyboard as well, by the way. Couldn't get my controller to work and I feel like the controls for this are even worse on keyboard. But it's okay, we'll get we'll get through it. Right, so I think I just head back to this. So hang on, can I jump over this? Oh, I can. What's in here? <gasps> no! No! Get away! Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Oh! Oh! The thought, thought, thought. Sorry. But like he he was gonna he was gonna bite me. Um. There's nothing here. Oh, I wasted bullets for nothing. I wasted bullets for nothing. That's fine. Right. So, just climb up here. God, the camera is woeful in this woeful it just makes everything so much harder so unnecessarily difficult <laughs> okay i reckon i'll make it a cross ah ah now what happened okay there we go gotcha ah <laughs> These controls are driving me insane. Insane. Um, right, so, ooh. And so, yeah, over there is the door that we opened earlier. So, yeah, you can just, like, take a shortcut straight in here. If you want to, you just miss the strength upgrade I guess plus some no plus some items okay finally right and that one doesn't open okay um I think I jump across here, hang on. Oh! Screw you! Okay, so jump, go! Whoa. Okay, um. Whoa. Okay, that doesn't open. There's something. Stop. There's something down here. More of those doubloon things. I don't I don't know what they're called, what that word is, but anyway. Stop, please. Right, I think we're almost there. We're almost there. So, um, we're going to do some pickups before we finish this off. More doubloons. And I think over here we can get to this roof actually. Hang on. I go away. Where? 
it's meant to be like a pickle. Oh, it's down here. Okay. Well, I assume we just climb back up then. Okay. Great. So now we just run to the other side and we will end the level and get a coffee. Mademoiselle Carvier, it's Lara Croft. I need your help. Miss Croft, I recognize you from photos and Werner's description. Come in. Thank you. An evil night to be out alone, Miss Croft. Our streets are not safe anymore. Mademoiselle Carvier, I have just come from Werner's apartment. And how is Werner? I'm afraid Werner is dead. Dead? just before we do that I want to really quickly just go over that cutscene so the police helicopter corners Lara on the rooftop she makes a daring leap to a drain pipe then falls into a dumpster Lara emerges unharmed and heads off to find Von Croy's friend Margot Carvier so I'm just going to speak to her for a bit and then we'll go over the information that she gives us yes and I don't have time to waste I'm being chased all over Paris you owe me an explanation I'm waiting it's all a bit vague I arrived at his apartment today from London. He was babbling with fear. He said he tried to contact you. He did. I never expected that. Not after Egypt. Werner has been fearful for his life. He accepted a commission five weeks ago. Since then, he's been acting strangely, jumping at shadows. He even left a package with me for safekeeping. Package? His notebook. Addressed to you. Who was the commission from? The client's name was Erkhardt. He wanted Werner to research something called the Obscura Paintings. Werner approached me at my department at the Louvre. Obscura Paintings? Five 15th century images, thought to be linked to alchemy and the dark arts. Were you able to help him? A little, I think. Poor Werner was clearly terrified. Can we move this along a bit? He felt he was being stalked. He could well have been. The Monstrum is running around Paris, according to the press. You mentioned Werner's notebook earlier, mademoiselle. His field notebook. He said he wanted you to have it if anything happened to him. If he left his notebook, he was spooked. You still haven't explained what happened. There was gunfire. That's all I can recall. Gunfire? Werner was shot? Did you kill him? I, I can't remember. It's all a blur. Miss Croft, I strongly suggest that you talk to the police. So let's just quickly go through the information that she's told us. So Lara speaks to Werner's friend, Margot Carvier. Lara informs Carvier that Werner von Croy is dead and that she doesn't remember what happened. Carvier reveals that Werner has been fearful for his life after accepting a commission five weeks ago. This was a commission for the Obscura paintings made by Eckhart. Carvier mentions that Werner left his notebook with her for safekeeping addressed to Lara. Margot Carvier works at the Louvre and reveals that the paintings are five 15th century images thought to be linked to alchemy and the dark arts. They mention the Monstrum, the crazed killer running around Paris. 
This could be why Werner was scared. Carvier asks Lara if she killed Werner and she says she can't remember, it's all a blur. Carvier tells Lara that she must talk to the police. So depending on what we choose here, she'll either give us the notebook from Werner or not give us the notebook. Now, we can still get it even if she doesn't give us the notebook, but I think it's just nicer to be given the notebook. So let's be nice. So the nice option is we're assuring her, I didn't kill Werner, I didn't. Mademoiselle, I was a good friend of Werner's. I didn't kill him. I didn't. If you say so. Do you have the notebook? I do. It's safe for the moment. So, oh, I'm not sure if actually maybe this is the one that affects the outcome or if it's the previous one or if it's both. So yeah, we shouldn't pick, then I suggest you give it to me now. <laughs> Even though I love, I love that line and the way she says it. But yeah, we're going to just be a bit polite. I really am going to need Werner's notebook. Somebody killed Werner. You say you don't remember clearly what happened. Perhaps the police are right in suspecting you. I never killed Werner. I think you better leave, Miss Croft. What about the notebook? I think not. What? Werner was unsure of you, and so am I. Mademoiselle, what are you doing? I've decided it would be wrong of me to hand over the notebook. I'm going to call the police. My warning Why? is out of respect for Werner's memory, but that's all the chance I'm giving. But I, I picked the polite options. I don't understand. I don't understand why she didn't give me the notebook. Let me know in the comments below what I did wrong. I'm so upset. We have a little over a minute to search the apartment. We can still find the notebook um, if we search the apartment thoroughly. So let's just do that. Right. So, ooh. Um, I'll take that. So we're just like stealing her stuff basically <laughs> we'll pawn it later so yeah the journal is here Ooh, please we're under time pressure ah! okay the police are closer go away great so we got the we got the notebook now anyway um i think there's one more thing in this desk and then let's get out of here Ooh, Lara, please. Stop this. Right, let's go. Oh. <gasps> okay, so I don't know what went wrong at the end there. I feel like everything went wrong today, but you know what? That's just Angel of Darkness really, isn't it? We have a love-hate, a love-hate relationship. So I'm interested to know what you think of this game, the change of atmosphere, the change in Lara's character, the change in the style of game. This is definitely a much darker game and more of a talking to people kind of game as well, which is quite exciting. So now I am just going to take a moment to, as briefly as possible, go over the production of Angel of Darkness and just explain a little bit to anyone who's curious why this game is unfinished and the controls are bad and stuff like that. So all of the info I'm about to read out are taken from the two articles that I used at the end of my Chronicles playthrough. So they are Ars Technica and Eurogamer. So I will link those two articles again in the description box below. So at the time Tomb Raider Chronicles was being developed, another team at Core had already begun working on Angel of Darkness, which was to be a big change for the franchise. So basically Core split the development team, as far as I understand it, into two different groups. One was sent off to work on Chronicles, one was sent off to work on Angel of Darkness. While Angel of Darkness continued the storyline of the previous classics, it was to be the first Tomb Raider game for PlayStation 2, and they wanted to reimagine Tomb Raider a little bit, and as I said, add in, I think they were told from EDOS maybe, if I remember correctly, 
to make it more interactive and have Lara, you know, talking to people and different dialogue options and stuff like that. So after Chronicles was completed, after yet again, one year of development, the Chronicles team then joined up with the Angel of Darkness team. And this is where it all started to go very, very wrong for Angel of Darkness. So this is a part of the Ars Technica article that I'm going to read out. And this is Andy Sandham talking, who was level designer and script writer on Tomb Raider 3 to Tomb Raider 5. So he said, because they got a PS2 dev kit, the concept was effectively Lara visits every major city in the world that's built in GTA style, recalls Sandham, who left Core in 2001, just after the Chronicles team merged with the Angel of Darkness team. When we looked at it, we were like, that can't possibly work. We need to immediately go in and cut 90% of that content out. Otherwise, you're fucked. <laughs> The engine had to be thrown out and started again while the story concept was split up. So then it says the game was ultimately ravaged by massive slash and patch cuts that rolled through a final year of development that consumed almost the entire company. So basically, in summary, when after one year, the Chronicles team joined up with the Angel of Darkness team, they were basically like, what have you guys been up to? Everything you've worked on for Angel of Darkness is absolute crap. Some kind of GTA style thing apparently that they were doing. They were like, this is no good. We need to throw this all out and start all over again. So this next bit is by a programmer at Core called Gavin Rummery. So he and another artist, Adrian Smith, both recall that the fractured mess of a final game reflected the internal development environment at core. So this is a quote. It was 30 or 40 people, Rummery says. It didn't have any organization to it. It wasn't clear who was in charge, who the leads were. There were lots of people with headphones on, just all working on their bit, and then one disaster after another as they realized things didn't tally up. So it seems like no one in the team was communicating with each other and nobody actually fully knew what they were doing or what they were supposed to be working on. You know, there was no plan or structure to people working on Angel of Darkness. So despite all of this absolute chaos and the fact that they were completely behind on the development of the game, EDOS apparently was still insistent that they release the game. Now they were pushing for a particular deadline and I'm pretty sure it was so it would coincide with the release of the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider film Cradle of Life. So Angel of Darkness was released in June 2003 and so was Cradle of Life. So I think EDOS was pushing for Core to meet this deadline so it could be released alongside the film even though all the developers were saying, this is not gonna be ready in time, we need more time, this is unfinished. So yeah, Angel of Darkness ended up being released several months before the game was actually ready to be released. So the game was released unfinished with so much of the game cut out, um, a lot of things didn't make sense, the controls were unfinished, the camera was unfinished. I actually read as well that they had released they were gonna release the game with only PlayStation controls and last minute they had to really quickly come up with PC controls that worked and it was just an absolute disaster. So when the Angel of Darkness was released, it sold a respectable 2.5 million copies, but Eidos was fed up and was doing its best to distance themselves from the poor reviews and the negative public reaction to the game. Because of course, Tomb Raider fans were annoyed when this game was released because it kept crashing, they couldn't play it properly, the controls were awful, people were really disappointed. Eidos then ultimately decided that the best damage control from this was to give the Tomb Raider franchise to one of its more reliable American studios, Crystal Dynamics, and this left the team at core shocked. So this game marked the end of the core design Tomb Raider era and honestly uh, the blame for this goes to EDOS because they should have listened to core 
and listened to the fact that this game was not ready and they needed more time and Eidos should have extended the deadline instead of forcing them to release an unfinished game. But sure look, that's the story anyway of Angel of Darkness and well a very summarized version of the story and why we ended up with the game that we did which is a real shame this was supposed to be a trilogy and the second two games were cancelled obviously because this was so hated and destroyed by critics and fans so it killed the trilogy and I think it's a real shame because I think they had a really nice idea here a really good story and I would love to see this actually remade properly one day. Anyway, I feel like this video is super long, so I'm going to end it here for today. Thank you so much for your support, and I will see you next week in part two.